we st I started convening a seminar on consciousness, an interdisciplinary seminar on consciousness in uh, 2016. And we had this problem of understanding each other because we were using the same concepts, but with different meanings, which was really funny. So um, I realized that I was parasiting my neurologist colleagues because they, if they wanted somebody from philosophy, then I had to explain why am I there and what <laughs> am I doing. And I was looking to, for a model, for a theoretical model to explain my presence there. And now I'm parasiting you as mathematicians because actually I need some solutions from you or some suggestions for, for our research. And the model I came um, for the neuro with from the, for the neurologist was this ESR model of consciousness. Um, this is epistemical structural realism, which can offer, in my view, some feasible, feasible uh, theoretical framework for the study of consciousness and its associated neurophysiological phenomena. Um, I have to explain that we are working on um, epilepsy patients and especially on uh, epilepsy that is uh, drug resistant and not we, the neurologists in the group. And they are applying um, intracranial and electroencephalography uh, for seven days, uh, 24 hours after 24 hours. The patients are being monitored. And during this monitoring, um, which is done for surgery and which is necessary for surgery, you can talk to the patient. And it's actually even nicer for them to have some other types of activities than just waiting to be monitored for that uh, unpleasant uh, operation. And we are also, um, some other colleagues also played some theater plays for them. And during that period, they were kind of monitored as well. So it was a bit fun for them. And at the same time, it was useful for the scientists. So now for this type of data that you collect, um, you do need very good mathematical and theoretical models because otherwise you don't really know what to do with it in terms of cognitive systems and consciousness and so on. So I came up with this idea of using uh, structural realism, but not necessarily the ontic structural realism, which claims in a very crude way put uh, by uh, Bas van Frassen, uh, claims that there are actually no objects and that structure is all there is, this so-called radical structuralism. I'm more in favor of this milder version of epistemic structural realism, which more moderately states that all we can know is the structure of the relations between objects and not the objects themselves. While structural realism is generally defended in light of various considerations in contemporary physics, uh, the controversy continues regarding the exact meaning of the proposed version of structuralism. Uh, some argue against the ESR, especially against the version that uses Ramsey sentences, and advocate the OSR starting from considerations deriving from the whole argument in general relativity and the status of particles in quantum physics. Now, just two explanations. I guess everybody knows about this, but just to be sure that I explained the concept. <clears throat> Ramsey or Carnap sentences are formal logical reconstructions of theoretical propositions that attempt to draw a line between science and metaphysics on the basis of the distinction between scientific or real questions and metaphysical or pseudo questions. In a Ramsey sentence, <laughs> the non-observable theoretical terms are subst substituted with observational terms to be found in the observation empirical language. It's the kennen erkennen distinction in German, meaning you are acquainted with something or you really understand something. So this would be the, the whole argument that I mentioned earlier is um, in the context of modern space-time physics um, and refers to a gauge freedom in general relativity that is the presence of surplus a mathematical structure in general relativity that has no correlate in physical reality. Now, talking about ESR earlier, now others challenge, challenge the OSR starting from a metaphysical principle 
of the identity of the indiscernibles, the weaker version, namely the ESR, being more plausible for them, and I'm talking about Matteo Morganati. Morganti. Sorry. All this apart, what is important for our project is that while not denying the existence of objects, the ESR does not concentrate on them either. Uh, they are indeed very hard to pinpoint, the objects, when discussing their neurophysiological basis of consciousness. Because you have all these net networks, you have all these connectomics, and you don't know for sure which part does what, and when, and how, and uh, in what combination. The ESR emphasizes relations versus objects, and the retention of structure across theory change. In other words, it emphasizes the continuity across theory change through the structural or mathematical aspects of our theories. Thus, structuralism is generally important for our project inasmuch as it is a conception of philosophy as continuous with science. And as a practical philosopher, I'm very happy to <laughs> use that. And this is Quine's idea, actually, that philosophy is actually not conceptual analysis, but the abstract branch of the empirical sciences. Um, I think I will just squeeze, skip this uh, related uh, Quine Putnam indis indispensability thesis, an, argumental, uh, an argument for the reality of mathematical entities, because we do not have much time. And I will not deal here also either with uh, issues such as confirmation, holism, anti realist epistemic uh, argument of Benasser, Affenfield against the Platonic idea that mathematical objects are abstract entities that cannot causally interact with concrete physical realities. Uh, we had the discussion already yesterday on uh, closure. Uh, neither with Benasserov's idea of mathematical structuralism, asserting that there are no mathematical objects, or with the complete denial of physical reality, of course, the mathematical universe uh, hip hypothesis. I only refer to Quine's naturalism. For me, this is really important in what I'm doing, in what we are doing in the project. Uh, it's the philosophical methodology that he suggested in his uh, methodological critique of traditional philosophy. And I will argue that Quine's naturalism is somehow in tune with the ESR, with the methodology that I consider more fine-tuned for the study of consciousness and its uh, associated neurophysiological uh, phenomena. Um, as Quine asserted, our best theories are our best scientific theories. Rather than metaphysically starting from first principles, we should look at our best scientific theories which contains, sometimes implicitly, our currently best account of what exists, what we know, and how we know it. And since, in general, our best scientific uh, theories are uh, mathematically expressed, an ontological commitment to mathematical entities seems inherent to our best scientific theories. And all mathematical theories, even non-algebraic ones, describe structures, and here's the structuralism idea, Structures consist of places that stand in structural relations to each other. Thus, deriv derivatively, mathematical theories describe places or positions in structures, but they do not describe objects. Systems are instantiations of structures, and systems typically contain structural properties over and above those that are relevant for the structures that they are taken to instantiate. In the shift from one theory to the other, there is continuity or accumulation, and this continuity is obviously one of form or structure, not of content. And I'm coming to the last uh, idea re referring to, and maybe the most important to ESR, John Worrell's uh, reconstruction, <laughs> reviving of um, the ESR. Um, all these references, I can send them to you if you want, for the, for the sake of uh, time. So according to Worrell, we should not accept standard scientific realism, which asserts that the nature of the unobservable objects that cause the phenomena we observe is correctly described by our best theories. However, neither should we be anti-realists about science. Rather, we should adopt structural realism and epistemically commit ourselves the ESR epistemically commit ourselves only to the mathematical or structural content of our theories. 
since there is, says Worrell, a retention of structure across theories change, structural realism both avoids the force of the pessimistic meta-induction by not committing us to believe in the theory's description of the furniture of the old world, and does not make the success of science, especially the novel predictions of physical theories, seem miraculous by committing us to the claim that the theory's structure over and above its empirical content describes the world. Worrell attributes the historical roots of the ESR to Poincaré in the latter deba later debates inspired by his views, uh, it is thus not uncommon to find Poincaré's name associated with various structuralist positions. However, Poincaré's uh, structuralism is deeply entwined with Neo-Kantianism and the roles of convention and objectivity within science. And Pierre Duhem is also cited as a precursor of the ESR, and that is also a bit too far-fetched in my view, but I will not go into that. I just wanted to mention it because it's quite, quite a lot in the literature on that. Um, so ESR for me and for us, for our project, is a theoretical frag framework that would be in tune with our attempt to process and organize very complex and diverse empirical data through intracranial electroencephalography. And now I'm coming to the medical part of the project, which is not my uh, creation. <laughs> it's actually the work of the team at the emergency um, hospital, University Hospital in Bucharest. And the team is led by Ioana Mandruza, a colleague and a friend. She's an epileptologist and she's in, uh, in charge of the epilepsy program uh, in Romania. And uh, I found, I think, two days ago, this very nice thing in the PubMed, and I will read it. Given multiple, it's a, another team, a, a team uh, led by Ki, Lin and Wong, working exactly on the same stuff. And this is a kind of an abstract of their paper uh, to be published soon in the PubMed. Just This is uh, EPUB ahead of print. So given multiple channel uh, IEG, intracranial EEG signals, the ictal process involves continuous changes of information propagation. In each time slot, the connectivity relationship between channels can be represented as a matrix. Since the mat matrices from different time slots do not lie on vector spaces, the similarity between them cannot be computed directly. Ki, Lin and Wong, uh, and at all, of course, a large group of scientists regard the mat matrices as points on a Riemannian manifold, so that the similarity can be measured by the geodesic distance on the manifold. This addresses the information losing problem in existing methods using a vector to approximate a matrix. With the Riemannian method, the brain network dyna dynamics is figured out by clustering methods. A temporal segmentation process is applied to refine the segments for SOZ localization. Now I have to ask you Anna, to see if they use that or not, I guess not. I guess it is new. I have to explain what ICTL refers to. It's the physiological state or event, uh, which is a seizure, a stroke or a headache, uh, originates in the Latin ictus, which is blow or stir or stroke. In uh, electroencephalography, when they record during seizure, it's an ictal recording. <clears throat> and SOZ is the seizure onset zone. It can be a neuron sometimes, where it all starts and acts like a bazooka. The electrical impulse uh, all over the brain is completely crazy and the patient is in a very, very bad state, sometimes lacking respiration for minutes on and on. Um, so the epileptic focus localization via brain network analysis. And that's interesting because they work on connectomics, they work on brain network analysis. And for that reason, there are objects are not very important, but relations are very important because between different places in the brain. Um, <clears throat> so brain network connectivity plays an important part in computer aided automatic localization of the seizure onset zone. The problem is that if they don't localize during this long and intense monitoring the perfect focus, which could be very small, a neuron, as I said, then the, uh, the surgery means nothing. They cannot do the sur surgery. So the monitoring team is really very important. <clears throat> so our research group works on the relationship between consciousness and epilepsy and the role of the default mode network um, in this. 
I'm not so sure how many of you are familiar with the default mode network uh, concept. It, do I have to explain it? It's OK. So, <laughs> the dynamics of conscious states in respect to epileptic activity, for instance, is an interaction between two functional networks, one physiological, the default mode network, and one pathological, the epilepton. The method by which this arises is a matter of speculation at this point, with two theories standing out. The network inhibition hypothesis sustains that there is an indirect inhibition of the DMN via the profound diencephalic structure, thalamus, while the diminished workspace hypothesis states that during the seizure, more and more critical hubs of the DMN connectome are recruited by the epilepton. The mechanism by which the reverse happens, the sudden gradual regaining of consciousness in the post-ictal phase, is a topic that benefits of even less empirical data. <coughs> it's interesting in the first case because when we, uh, for instance, if, if I'm on a task, there are some activations in my brain. If I am without task and I just relax and stare somewhere, then the default mode me network starts working. It's like a switch. So it's like switching the light on and off. And there are new, uh, there are different networks uh, being activated. So in the case of the epilepsy, it's interesting if it works in the first case, exactly like in a normal brain, or it, and the DMN is switched off, or it is recruited, it is used by that. And since it has a very important part in self-knowledge and in social knowledge, then the results can be quite interesting uh, if we manage to select to be selective and to explain that better. So a recent uh, expert consensus proposed. Yes, it's already. A recent. Do I still have two minutes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> a recent expert consensus proposed that there are at least five types of alterations of consciousness that occur during epileptic seizures. Auras with illusions or hallucinations, these cognitive seizures, epileptic delirium, dialeptic seizures, and epileptic coma. Each are hypothesized to have a particular signature of impacting the DMN, and hence the subjective experience of the patient. Uh, intracranial simulation, uh, stimulation paradigms are used by their uh, epilepsy surgery. And um, stimulation protocol, there are low frequency subclinical stimulation protocols, PES, single pulse, electrical stimulation, and one hertz, to perform effective connectivity studies, and high frequency clinical protocols, 50 hertz, to obtain a functional mapping of different brain areas with various be uh, behavioral effects. post-processing of the raw intracranial recording and the Fourier analysis can quantify the amount of activation in gamma power and coherence, which is a direct reflection of activity in local near circus, circuits. What the group proposes is an analysis on the intracranial gamma signal into different activations behind the five types of icta, alterations of consciousness, intra and intersubjects. Uh, this will quantify how pathologic natural brain dynamics can impact the default mode network and thus its subjective and behavioral outputs. On the same contacts, the neurologist will further perform an intraictal connectivity uh, analysis to describe the functional networks behind this complex dynamics. They previously demonstrated that the SOZ, uh, seizure onset zone, connectivity is not a static but a dynamic concept, again, there are no objects, I'm ready. Uh, engaging in a variety of network configurations that can be accurately described in a personalized manner. The same uh, methodology can be applied <coughs> for describing the different qualias elicited by dif uh, direct electrical stimulations. They will separate the stimulation epochs into subclinical electrical activations or relevant functional areas without a conscious correlate, and clinical, which can be further divided into simple sensations and high order multimodal. Um, the analysis, this is the last slide, will allow the group to understand if the classes of phenomena differ predominantly in the pattern of local activation 
or on the contrary how the relatively homogeneous local activation is integrated in the default mode network and other high order associative networks and I stop here. Thank you very much for your attention.